as a group of moms are already legends here. When they signed up, they were like, we're moms and we're just done with everyone. Mm -hmm. They destroyed on epic proportions everything in that room <laughs> and I was just in awe. Worcester resident John Brown is a repeat customer. The first time that I went in, it was just this nervous feeling because I, my grandmother has like this huge table full of glass stuff since I was a kid. And um, we couldn't sit in the living room because we were gonna break some stuff. I definitely put myself in that place again. <laughs> You're gonna be like, I didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I like it. I think I'm gonna like it. Smashers must wear closed-toed shoes and cover their arms and legs. Smash It 2 also provides Tyvek suits and eye protection. I feel like I'm gonna have a little too much fun doing this. And we put on glove liners and cut-resistant gloves. Take your thunder stick, just smash down right on that table until you don't feel like smashing anymore. I just wanna smash. Don't forget about this one. I can do the TV. You can break a TV here. Ah! Take that, COVID! <laughs> you can trust the safety protocol here, say Cook and Chicarelli. Just ask them about their other business as consultants for OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Here's the deal. <laughs> We own a safety and yeah. regulatory compliance company. Good. We go to businesses <laughs> for the last 20 years. I walk through the door and be like, that's a risk. Don't do that. Get off the ladder. You're going to get hurt. Put that's, on your safety. Put on yeah, your safety right. glasses. Where's your protection? How about your gloves? That's what we do for a living. Right. So this is like a giant spoof on our very strict, regulated, heavily enforced world that we live in every single day. Smashing, however, is not always fun and games. One customer came here for an emotional release during her cancer treatment. But for that woman, for that moment in time, it meant something completely different, something that we couldn't have created. Courtney Young is that person. Uh, I was re-diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer in August. But just knowing that this place is here and that we can kind of come do that, even if we can't plan our frustrations, is, is really helpful. There's not really much you can do with the energy that you have except for deplete it, not on human but just, you know, TVs, toilets, cars, whatever. The opportunity to smash a pink toilet. Why not? Perhaps the end is the best part of the smash session. You could go crazy in your own kitchen and smash everything in there, but there's repercussions to that. Because at the end of the day, we do all the cleanup. It was something else. So how long does the smash session last? It depends. Anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. And if you're wondering what happens to all the wreck stuff, well, Darcy and Joe say they have a team that drops off household junk to smash and then picks up everything to be recycled afterward. They also take donations on designated drop off days. Coming up, escaping into nature and art. You're discovering things about the world around you, and it has an overall effect of calming your mind.
Smashing a television is one way to relieve tension, but you may be searching for a gentler escape. Some art, perhaps, or in nature, or maybe a combination of the two. Ted Reinstein has more. One way to calm the mind, discover your inner artiste. These impressive drawings and paintings are the work of students. I was never the art kid. I don't have a ton of natural ability. I went to school for engineering and math. Julie Beck was painting and drawing on her own time while working as a graphic designer. In 2010, she enrolled at the Academy of Realist Art in Boston. I'm really liking the line quality of what's happening up here. Today, Beck is not only a professional artist, she's the Academy's assistant director. It was really refreshing for me to walk in and have people tell me, we can teach you to do what you want to do. And it doesn't matter if you have a background or if it doesn't matter if you have previous training or a degree in art. Everybody starts from the ground up. Realist or representational art often attracts less attention in today's contemporary art-focused world. Representational art is simply art that has somewhat of a recognizable reality to it. Instructors at the Academy of Realist Art teach students the technical fundamentals of drawing and painting through observation. We are teaching you how to see. We cover things like value, shape, form, contrast, all the things that are important to visual information. Students take an intensive drawing course developed by 19th century French artist Charles Barg. Here you can see it's much more of a leaning square and yours has a little bit more of a kind of perfect square. There's a bit too much of a right angle feel to your jawline here. Online classes allow the Academy to grow beyond its presence in Boston's Leather District, even welcoming international students. They train at every level, including complete beginner. They're never required to keep up with other people, um, and we want people to really slow down and internalize and understand the information. When they do, the experience can be transformative, says Beck. So it really becomes a more meditative process where the entire world kind of falls away and you're singularly there with yourself and your thoughts. Some studios are outdoors. A new class at the Umbrella Art Center in Concord could inspire the next Ralph Waldo Emerson. Who knows? It's been really a salvation in a way to have something to go out and focus on and to relax with. The recently renovated Art Center offers an arts and environment program that includes nature journaling. Instructor Patty Braden is a longtime bird watcher and outdoors woman. The journaling aspect came in when I wanted to reinvigorate this thing that I have loved, which is birding. I want to welcome everybody here today to the intro to nature journaling. Nature journaling is simple, says Braden. Requirements are a notebook, basic art materials, and motivation. Go out into nature, city park, your backyard, your local trails, open your senses up and then start writing down what you're experiencing and then get that pencil out and draw. And no judgment because it's your journal. It's the fact that you're drawing to learn, not learning to draw. Brayton's classes are online, but occasionally meet in person. I like using a ringed binder like this. Over time, says Braden, nature journals become rich with personal reflections as well as climate and plant-related information. You focus more, you see things that you never saw before. You're discovering things about the world around you and it has an overall effect of calming your mind. As Frost said, way leads on to way and it is really true with nature journaling no matter the weather. The Academy of Realist Art has two other locations in Canada where the school was first launched. As for the Umbrella Art Center in Concord, they are returning to in-person art classes for the fall. Last year, they completed a massive multi-million dollar makeover complete with a state-of-the-art performance hall. The Umbrella Stage Company will begin welcoming audiences back with live performances in September. Up next, escape the electronics and stretch your legs.